Okay, just make sure everything is turned on and you guys can hear me. I'm going to do some audio adjustment real quick. And let me play a song so I can test our desktop audio levels and I'm not blasting my friend's ear holes out. Let's see here. Let me find one of my songs that we've done on stream. That way we don't get DMCA'd right at the beginning. That would not be fun for anyone, especially not me. I don't want to be muted on this stream particularly. Uh, I guess we'll play my unofficial theme song, I guess. That's not the one. This is the one. Okay, guys, give me a second. I'm going to mute my mic and check the audio levels. Okay, so I think that'll do it. I think those levels are acceptable. Hello and welcome. So today is going to be a little different than my normal Tuesday music stream. So I'm going to be uh, premiering my first uh, album. So it's uh, going to be a fun ride. <laughs> I was panicking because I couldn't find the video I had prepared a few minutes ago, like 20 minutes ago, and I started speed editing a new video so we'd have something for the stream. And when I ended that and began exporting, uh, I realized that I didn't have enough time. And uh, that the, uh, the video wouldn't be done exporting. And I realized going back in my files that I already had prepared a video and just had not exported it yet. So 25 minutes wasted, but I think we can find a workaround. So I've got uh, the video up and let me get on over. Okay, so this video is literally just in my editor. Uh, the export, since I'm paying for the free version, only happens uh, one second for every real time second. So <laughs> it would take an hour to export this. So we're watching it in the editor. Hooray! <laughs> oh, so many butterflies in my gel today. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Uh, so this is from my first album. It's called Sweet Home Aboon. And it's just a bunch of ambient songs th that are inspired by my home planet. So I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I have enjoyed it. And as I've enjoyed making it. Uh, so the first song is just titled a boon and uh, I've cre created some just little amateur gifts, images, you know, videos for the video portion of this. I am not the world's best animator or best anything for that matter. I'm still learning. That's why I'm here. So, 
Uh, first things first, I want to let everyone know that this will be free on YouTube to listen to. Uh, that's where I'm at right now. And uh, if you would like, you can get the downloads on my Patreon, but totally free on YouTube. And I'd recommend that in these trying times. Uh, so let's get started. Let's play the first song. So before the song starts, I'm going to just give some quick information about the GIF. Um, so every image in this album is this very cartoony, sketchy style here. And I'm actually going to shrink myself out of this a little. There we go. That way you'll be able to see everything on the other videos. This one I was fine. But in the other videos, you're going to want to see more. So, uh, anyway, these are all kind of this amateur sketch style. Uh, these are some worm tubes that can be found on my planet. Um, let me see here. If I hide this, so you can see in my atrium that there's these orange tubes up on the high mountains. Those are the worm tubes. They have little uh, worm guys in them, tube worms that uh, sift through the wind on my home planet. So here in the video, you can see the uh, worm sprills coming out, some nice sweet sunlight coming down, and just a yellow galobian being happy on the desert side of Ubun, taking in that sun. Okay. Um, you'll notice there's a lot of nature sound effects in this pack, a lot of wind sounds because Ubun is very windy. And uh, so we'll continue playing this.
Okay, and that was our first song. So, I tried out my bot. Looks like my bot's not working for some reason. Data tag failure. Response size too large. Interesting. Okay, so I can't give the command for the YouTube link. So, sorry for, about that, friends. Okay, so, uh, some information about that song. Uh, I did swap out the wind sound for an ocean sound about halfway through. And, uh, that was one of the, uh, about midway point songs that I made. I made certain songs first and then went back and just absolutely shredded through songs and made like seven in one weekend. I was making about three or four a day just because I was having fun with it. And uh, I had nothing better to do with my time. Uh, that was about one of the Midway songs. I learned a lot during this album making process. So definitely you can probably hear the difference in textures and quality uh, from song to song. So that was song one. And then uh, song two is called Greeting Party. And let me press play on this so we can get to the image. Okay, and I'm going to talk about this image uh, before we go on. So since I've been to Earth, I think it'd be really neat if humans came to Boone sometime. So this is my thought behind a uh, human coming to Boone and uh, us being uh, able to make friends with them at home. So uh, in this one, we've got more tube and tube worm action. You can see the human spaceship in the background. This is the human astronaut. And then just a bunch of Golovian friends here to greet them. I don't think I've mentioned this on stream before, but Golovians reproduce asexually. And the way we do it is we just kind of decide one day, hey, you know what? A new friend would be nice. And we dedicate a part of ourselves to start growing another Golobian. So you'll notice a couple of these Golobians have some extra eye spots in them, and that's their uh, polyps forming for our new Golobian friends. So this one's super lucky, because they won the lottery and got two new friends for the price of one. And uh, this one's also lucky, because, you know, Everyone's always lucky to have a new friend. Okay, and we'll go ahead and play.
Okay. And so that was Reading Party. Uh, so that song was one of the later songs I made, and it was one of the first songs that after I was done making it, I was actually proud of. I tend to be super hard on myself, and everything I create, I think, is never going to be good enough, you know, for me personally. And if it's not good enough for me, it's not good enough for the people I want to share it with. But this song made me feel like um, it was the second song that made me feel like, man, maybe I actually did a good job. Maybe. So that was this one. Let's go ahead and get the image for the next one. By the way, the, the sounds for Golovians, since we tend to be kind of silent and wobbly, is just the sound of someone wobbling jelly on YouTube. Okay. And this song is just pretty um blandly named it's just colobians and it's just the song that reminds me of my people back home and here we've just got some colobians and uh we've got one of them that's polyping how good for them uh this one's nice and spread out he's getting in all that good tasty sun if he's this spread out he's probably been in a dark place for a long time and he needs to get as much sunlight as possible to help build up his strength again. And then this little guy, this is a plopple. So after a polyp is done on the parent, they enter the plopple phase and that's where they fall off. And you know, they just plop on the ground. So we've got a nice little plopple over here enjoying their own ray of sunshine. Okay, and we'll press play. Thank you. 
No, that one was Colobian. That one was also one of my um, prouder moments of the album. I'm going to turn this off real quick and take a look at something. I'm just going to take a look at the time on these. Because if I remember correctly, yeah, this is one of the shortest songs on the album. It's not the shortest. Um, Actually, the shortest song on the album is like the first one I made. And they just got progressively longer as time went on. So the shortest one is almost three minutes, not quite there yet. And the longest one is just a little over six minutes. So let's get this back in. Get our next image up. So this one's title is Plopple Parade. And it just features a bunch of young plopples on their way to the sun. But uh, unfortunately, Golobian's eyes aren't that great. We just have these spots that tell us what's light and what's dark. We can't really tell objects, so we just follow the sun a lot. Uh, unless we're in groups, and then we'll decide if we're moving on or not. But uh, these plopples are trying to get up to this nice stunning rock. Nice peak for getting that tasty sunlight. And uh, failing to see the, uh, the pit in the collection at the bottom. Eventually, they will reach the top, but not in this animation. So, let's go ahead and play. This one, this song, was the first song I felt proud of that I've ever made, ever. And I've been making music since 2015, you know, unprofessionally. So, I'm excited about this one.
So that was um, the Plopple Parade song. And it's really where I found what I wanted the sound for the rest of the album to be. I discovered the instruments that I wanted to carry throughout it. And uh, it was just like, I don't know, an inspirational moment listening back on it. It just felt like this song could have been made by someone who actually knows what they're doing. So, let's continue on. This one is just titled Sunning Rock. And it's just that, just a bunch of Golobians enjoying a rock in the sun. That's a favorite pastime of ours, is just finding a nice place to eat up some of that tasty sunlight. Welcome in, Shield. Nice to see you. Have a nice lurk.
Okay, and that was the the song for Stunning Rock. Let's go ahead and get in our next image. Okay, uh, so this one is Extremophile. It's um, just got a nice Golobian in a place that's maybe a little too hot for other people. Some of the plants have burst into flames. There's some vents going on in the ground, and it's super windy. It's always heckin' windy on my planet. But Globians are extremophiles, and that means that we can uh, survive pretty much anywhere. Uh, Shell also loves extremophiles. Appreciator of all things mollusk. I'm excited that you stopped by because some of the songs in the middle of the album feature the gastropods that I mentioned to you a couple weeks ago. So you'll actually be able to see what they look like and see some cute little gifts of them. Uh, but for now, we'll go ahead and play this song.
So that one was the song Extremophile. And the next song is the halfway point in our album. And it also marks the uh the last song before a tone shift. So the album is split into three parts. The first part is mainly about Golobians and the environments on the planet. The second part focuses on the Song Sisters, which are our gastropod brethren that live on the uh, desert side of the planet. Then there's a intermission song that's just about the ocean that separates the Goldilocks range from the icy part of the planet. And the last songs, uh, two songs on the album, are about the friends that came down and started living there. And of course, the final song is the one we made on stream uh, last month and with our fellow space friends. So let's go ahead and move on to the next image. So this song is just called Helping. And it features an Earth astronaut trying to fix an amorphous blob of sorts. You know, abstract circuitry and all that. And, uh, Galoobians, we love to help. But for some reason, a lot of people don't really want our help. Maybe it's because we don't have hands. It's hard to help when you don't have hands. Child Gastropod, also a fan of circuitry. For those who don't know, he's a um, good friend, a mutual over on Twitter, and they are a, a snail that fell into a computer. Anytime, Shield. We support friends here all the time. You guys go check them out on Twitter. They're starting their VTuber journey here soon. So also uh, follow their Twitch. We're looking forward to you. Make sure to invite me to your debut party. for the compliment on this song. It's what I was going for.
So that was the song Helping. It is one of my favorite on the album. It's really one of the um, close to final songs that I made. So I had a really good grasp and understanding of what I was going for and uh, the sounds that I wanted. And I was just really proud of it. So uh, the next songs feature are Mollusk Friends. And there's a shift in the sound of the album. Since it's more desert oriented, these next few songs is going to um, feature things like sitars and more desert sounding themes. Mollus time, Mollus party. Now this one you won't be able to see them very well. They're moving kind of fast. Let me see if I can get a frame. Aha, I got one. <laughs> so they're a little hard to see in this picture. They'll be easier in the next two. But uh, here we have the desert. We've got some nice tubules that our mollusk friends uh, have made. It's nice and keeps their dens nice and uh, cool for them and such like that. Uh, so the thing about the gastropods on our planet they're kind of a mix of uh like a roly-poly and a snail if i was to compare them to earth creatures so they have the outer shell kind of like a roly-poly it's segmented and allows them to curl up super easy they have a bottom row of scales that help protect their bodies when they're out in the desert similar to how lava mollusks are uh, here on Earth, and uh, they've just got, you know, um, they are a bit higher functioning beings than the gastropods on Earth. They do build and collect things, so this is them out on their journey to the desert to pick up some uh, tubule fragments left over from the tube worms. It's a nice uh, substance for them to eat and munch on. So they'll go out and collect them and attach them to their shells. So the things you'll hear in their songs are the wind because they're in the desert and it's the most windy there. And uh, then you'll hear some wooden clanging sounds and that's to symbolize the sound of their, uh, their harvest uh, on their shells. And uh, Shell, this is the one I tried to play for you on stream the last time you were here, but unfortunately we had connection issues. As you can tell, we've got some new internet gods in this house, and it actually lets me do things and lets people hear things. So you're going to be able to hear it uninterrupted. So let's get it started. I forgot. I got to rewind it. I was too excited.
Oh, something I forgot to mention at the beginning of that. And I already told Sheld the last time I tried to introduce this song. Uh, that the song has a call and response vibe to it. So there's alert calls that some of the sisters make that pause the sounds in the song. And then the all clear, which gives them the go ahead to continue. And so does the sound. Uh, that's the only song this is featured in. And this is actually the first song that I made for the album. So we'll go on to the second one. Now this one, you get a good view of our song sisters. Uh, Sheld says that it was awesome. They love the texture. Everything together is cool and complex. And the sitar melody was nice. Thank you. Thank you for your compliment. So yeah, this is um, an older sister and a younger sister. Uh, you can see the mucus webbing they've made to carry their nice uh little packages around uh you could see their you know in an abstract manner their little scales he down here uh they are spotted they have white spots all over their shells um and their shells are kind of sandy in texture and color and uh this little sister is still getting the grip on things so she's being carried by her oldest sister and she, of course, is doing her best and collecting what she can. Uh, so we'll get started on this one.
Okay, and uh, I forgot to mention the title of this song is Sisterhood. So that was uh, that song there. And you can definitely hear this one was a post Plopple Parade song. And it has the uh, spacey guitars in it that I had in the rest of the album. And uh, I think it added a nice texture with the sitar and the marimba sound. I think it helped really pad things out a little better than the first song I had made. Okay, uh, so this is the image for the next song. We've got some sisters in their den. Uh, so when they're not in the desert collecting up yummy treats, their treats get hung at the tops of their caverns snacks later on and they just kind of nap. If you don't know a lot about earth gastropods they tend to sleep and have bursts of energy where they do their quote-unquote snail chores but um, most of the time they're sleepy little fellas and that's the same for the ones on a boon. They just kind of like to relax in their den most of the time and they'll really only venture out to the desert to collect some tasty nibbles. And the thing about their shells, since they're segmented, it allows them to curl up and keep moist and uh, keep from drying out. So it's nice and cool. They're nice and moist and what else do you want in the world? Yes, they do roll up like really pulley. Yes, they do decorate their den with the things they collect. And sometimes they collect things that aren't food. Like I said, they are, are higher functioning beings. So if they like the look of a rock or something that they find in the desert, they will take it home just to have a nice rock. Yes, marimbas are a very cool instrument. Uh, maybe if we have time, I'll show you what the song is in Eiffel Studio.
Okay, and that was Sister's Den. It's the final song uh, about our gastropod uh, further in over there. Sister in, I guess. And uh, that one, I'm going to be honest, it was not one of my favorite songs to, <laughs> to re-listen to. Um, I definitely hear a lot of places that can improve, but I think all artists are like that. They look at their thing and they're like, this thing needs so much more work. So much more work. Okay, uh, and I believe the next song is about the ocean. Let's get over to that image. Okay, so let's see here. Mubot for some reason. Why did it stop that? No. No, Sheld is allowed to spam waves if she wants to. No. Shut up, Moobot. You don't know. <laughs> it's not your fault. Um, I'm going to have to fix that. I believe it's a setting in Streamlabs. But I'll definitely fix that because people need to be able to spam their emojis if they want. But for now, it'll have to wait. Uh, so the thing about our ocean, most things are clear, mostly. Uh, it's very dark in most of the places. And a lot of things don't have eyeballs just because they're not worth being able to see. Um, they'll have some color in some places, but mostly they're clear. And uh, there's just some Golobians floating at the top, riding on their current on their way to the snowy side. Uh, but we'll continue. We'll go ahead. Uh, now this one has a separate sound from the other segments of the... That album, it's the only one that focuses on the ocean because we have such little ocean. So it's best just to uh, only have the one song that focuses on it. So we'll continue on.
Okay, and that was the song about our ocean. And I fixed the issue where, for some reason, our Streamlabs is chastising users for doing basic, normal stuff. You shouldn't scream at you anymore for getting excited about things. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had to talk. Talk with it. Okay. Uh, these next two songs are focusing on... Yay! Gastropods and ocean waves! And it looks like he's not screaming at you! That's even better! <laughs> okay. Uh, these next two songs are about the snowy side of our planet. Here we've got a bunion on its uh, journey across the snow from one hut to the other in the glaciers. Uh, the bunion are a species that uh, came here from another planet. Uh, and we're getting conflicting stories. We're inclined to believe the bunion, but the space meanies always have something else to say about it. But um, they're immigrants from a planet that was taken over uh, hostily. And uh, they needed a place to stay. And since Globians love to help people, we offered up our place. Why they chose to live in the dark and the cold, we don't know. But they are here. And we are happy to have them. So we'll go ahead and play this song. I believe this one... Let me see the name of this one. The other one's name was Alien Ocean, and this one's name is Ice Haven. to mention you're gonna hear their trumpeting throughout the song. Yeah that's what that low sound was. Yeah, they have rather large noses that they push air through, kind of like an elephant seal. And so they create that low trumpeting noise. And it's good, it helps them find each other in the snow and stuff. Uh, towards the end, you'll hear the barking of a younger bunion. Uh, but for now, throughout the song, you're just going to hear the deep trumpeting of an adult before they arrive home.
Okay. So my thought behind that song was similar to the first Song Sisters uh, song. And that's like an introduction into their daily activity in the world. This one, you can hear an adult bunion uh, going in and out of their separate dens and um, calling out to anyone who might be hearing. And then at the end, they go inside their main den where their young little bunion is and uh, just have a little conversation. So that's what you kind of hear throughout the spaceshipy, whooshy noises of the doors. Uh, the crunching of the snow under their feet, and then the lack of snow and wind toward the end after the final door swoosh to signify that they're indoors now. And the second song is just uh, about these guys again. So this is what they look like without their coats. Uh, they have very ornamental hats. Uh, as you can tell, they're a four-legged species. And uh, they're nice and fluffy. Um, they're kind of like earth cotton candy. They have pink hair, very fluffy and soft. Um, they've got bright red feet and noses. Those big noses good for crawling out across the, the plains and stuff. Um, and here they're just looking at some old videos of their home world and probably missing it. I understand that. Being homesick is hard, and especially when you're unable to go home, it's even harder. So we definitely want to help these space friends as much as possible. Yeah, and uh, the GIF, you'll actually see the planets moving up and down. Uh, these are some of the highest functioning creatures we have on Aboon. They are a highly advanced race compared to the rest of us down here. Uh, really, the only reason Galobians are out in space and as advanced as we are is because the space meanies like to use us in their uh, initiative for spreading integration. Basically, they'll send a Galobian to see how nice and friendly a civilization is. Uh, we can't really die, is the thing. So they kind of just use us as a crash test dummy for integration into the United Space Initiative. Uh, but back to the video. Here they hung up their coats and their scarves. They're just enjoying a nice warm cup of unknown liquids and uh, just holding on to their dear little young one and watching some old videos of home. So let's go ahead and get this started. just realized this video did not edit properly and we're not getting the nice animation to it. I will fix that before I export it.
actually going to fix this real quick. And that way I can show you the, the GIF proper, as it were. Let me go back. Uh, you missed it, Sheld, but basically at the beginning of the stream, uh, I was freaking out because I thought I hadn't created the video for the album and uh, I created a new one in like 20 minutes and I was sweating hard. Oh gosh. And that's the one we were watching. But it turns out I forgot I had already did it. I just hadn't exported it. So there's a separate save file that has everything properly adjusted in it that I made like two weeks ago. <laughs> so I'm going to get into that. And that's the one. Uh, well, we'll be able to see that animation. Yeah, so I use, since I have a potato, I use VSDC Video Editor and it's the potato friendly video editor. My, I tried DaVinci. Um, oh no. Here, let me mute this. Um, I tried DaVinci Resolve and literally my computer crashed. It shut down. It gave up the fight. And uh, so, yeah, that's how I discovered I have to use the cheaper version. Uh, with this one, though, they cap the uh, export time. So it matches it second per second. So if you have an hour long video, it's going to be an hour long export. Uh, so I definitely did not have enough time to export it this morning. If I had been thinking, I would have checked these things last night. But yesterday was not a good thinking day. Not a good day for thinking. Thank you for the compliment. Um, this is something we worked on last month. We were really excited to share with everyone. Let me, let me get some other music up and going maybe while we're messing around with this. That way you guys just aren't sitting here all in the silent and bored with everything. I'll load up another one of my songs that we made on the stream. That way it's a little better. play this one. This was the first song we had made on stream.
Man, maybe today's not a thinking day either. I started playing that song for you guys and did it on mute my desktop. <laughs> my brain is non-centralized. Please be kind to me. Okay. Uh, now, I'm just going to play a couple seconds of this so we can see the animation. It did it again. Gosh, God dang it. Okay, you guys are just going to have to wait and see it on the YouTube video. If I believe correctly, you should be able to see it. Just for a split second at the beginning. Yeah, no. I'm going to have to go back and fix that one. Well, I tried. Today is not the day. But uh, the next song is the final song. It's uh, Space Friends. We made it on stream. And uh, let's get over there. Okay, so this one is just me and my Earth sponsor, Ham, having a good hug. Humans, I have found love to hug and pet things. And they're very lucky because the universe is filled with things that love to be hugged and pet. A big, squishy hug. Thank you. I'm not good at animation, but I was very proud of the squish. going to pause for a moment. The stream manager I'm looking at looks like uh, things got chopped off there for a second. Gonna check my frames. Check my frames. Uh, it says we're good. Okay. 
We'll continue. Of course, since I made this for YouTube, got that blurb there. Okay, and that was the album and the gifts I had made for it. Thank you for uh, complimenting the instruments. On that one, it was um, a little different than what we made on stream. The instrument um, library that I liked to use for that album uses so much RAM. Just so much. Uh, she's um shell just says i enjoyed you're talking about making it a bunch well thank you that's the point of this stream obviously if people want to listen to it they can listen to it free on youtube but for this one i just like to give some in-depth explanation of some things uh since you're here shell do you want to see any of these songs in fl studio before we end the stream we've got a good five or ten minutes we can waste together Okay, that's fine. If you can't pick, let me get my studio open. Okay, I think then 
I'll try to find something that's not going to sound like a dying music box on the stream. Like I said, Flex takes up so much RAM for some reason, and I used it so much. Okay, let's see here. Uh, let me go to the album. Y'all lucky I didn't sing. Globians aren't built for singing. Let's see. Making Space Friends was already having troubles on stream, so let's skip that one. Uh, let me try Plopple Parade. That was one I was really proud of. Okay, let me, let me get over here. Gonna take a second to lewd the beefy song and aforementioned potato is uh baking today. Working hard for us. Okay, so I'm in luck because this is a song I actually bothered to organize and you get to see it. <laughs> Let's see here. So, uh, I've got several layers here, kind of like in an art program. It's got different patterns on each layer. Uh, so I've got four different chords, uh, four different accompanying chord bases, two different drum patterns, a drum lead-in sound, uh, and four different melodies, and then accompanying instruments. I've got bells, harp. Uh, this wood is kind of like a, a xylophone plunk. Uh, Ace and nylon are the spacey guitars. And these orchestra ones are just the swelling synth sounds that you can hear towards the middle of the song. So uh, as I mentioned at the start of the video, uh, the sound of the Golobian sound effects is just a guy wiggling jello on YouTube. And I've clipped the sound and repurposed it for us to kind of simulate the wobbling of a Golobian gel. Uh, I have each instrument and uh, on its own layer here, it's easier for me to organize. Uh, all the chords are in the same layer, all the bass in the same layer, so on and so forth. Uh, the song starts out really slow, and I wanted it to build. So it's like a plopple, slowly making its way to the sun rock. But then maybe it meets up with some friends and feels a little more energized. And more plopples come together, and the song gets more energetic. And uh, the song gets faster. And then here is where we have the introduction uh, to the, like the symphony sounds swelling up. That's what this envelope here is for. It gives us the nice build effect of the symphony. Uh, yeah, Galopians get very energized about friendship, obviously. <laughs> so when we're together, we're a little faster than when we're alone and just so much happier. Uh, so, uh, for the drum pattern, I actually don't start it until we introduce the symphony as well. We have the lead up drum pattern one and then drum pattern two for the choruses. And I switch between the different drum patterns throughout the song. Uh, the reason there's so many chord and bass chord notes is the increasing tempo. So these notes are longer and then they get shorter. So these ones are a full bar, two to a bar, and then four to a bar, and then eight to a bar. So it kind of helps the sound of the buildup of the song uh, to be a little faster paced. Uh, here we have introduction to the 
new instruments uh, that help accompany everything. And uh, pretty shortly after, we have the uh, ending of the song. So what I like to do is gradually remove instrument and then focus on one or two in particular, with the final focus on one instrument for the end bar. And I think you can hear that for most of the songs. And then here, the orchestra follows all the way through, tapers off, just for these last notes to be a solo. Uh, so let me see if it'll let us play it and it sound good. Oh, unfortunately, it's not going to let us here, at least. But what I can do, what is doable, I've got my song in iTunes, so I'm going to load up the finished song. I'll leave my iTunes layer at the top so you guys can see it. And then uh, we'll follow along in the file. Aha, uh -huh, workarounds. The brain is thinking all of a sudden. Hooray, thinking brain. So this one's Popple Parade. Okay. All right, so. Let me get this up over here so we can see everything. And I'll just scroll through the song as we go. So here you can hear a short lead into the chord. This is where the first melody starts. Here in the song right now. There's also the secondary plopping effect. Let me pause this. So I found um, a sound effects pack that kind of lets me have this drip sound. And it's got a nice reverb to it. And I like to use it as a sound to indicate a new Golovian popping up. Yes, very good plops. We enjoy good plops here. So we start out with one and uh, around here another one appears and that helps energize them to move forward and then another one here and so on. So every time there's a little pop it's like a new Golovian or the Golovian's moving uh, in, a, in a fashion. So here in the chords, these are one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. To kind of give it some texture depth. Dip. Here, of course, it's sped up again, as well in the melody. Then here's the speed up and the orchestra intro our uh, intro. Lead up and the drums. Or here.
And then now we're here in the chorus. Now for these, I figured out an interesting sound that I like. Um, so let me open it up and explain it. Uh, there's these notes that you can change to like a, a pitch shift on. So these are the normal ones and these are the pitch shift notes. And that just gives it an interesting texture. So this is what it sounds like. No, that just kind of sounds like an alien sounding sound with the synthy bell and the pitch rise and fall in certain places to accompany the melody. Uh, I think it helps give the melody another texture that keeps it interesting throughout the song. Okay, let's go on. We're here now, where there's a break, just focusing on the chord and the orchestra. Lead in. Start out with some drums. Introduce new instruments. Introducing the guitar. Introducing everything else and the second guitar. And then here we leave off the chorus and focus on the instrument. And then we're focusing no drums, no chord, just on the instrument. Then we go back to the main melody. And that's how that song was made. And this is the one that energized me to finish the album. It's the one that I'm most proud of. And I'm happy I was able to share it with you. Uh, Sheld says the break is a cool detail before they come together faster. So yeah, uh, that really was one of the moments where I was happy listening back on it. Uh, the way I make songs... Uh, I don't really hear the patterns in my head, I guess. And it's a lot of messing around and finding out. And uh, Gastropod says they were also feeling energized uh, thanks to the music. Thank you. Uh, so that's where we, we were going for. And... Uh, Sheld, are you interested in music production at all? Have you played around with any of that software or anything? Uh, yourself? So, this was definitely a good day for me. I got to share my album. I got to share my process. I got to talk to a great space friend. Sheld says, I am, but I have not done much uh, with it yet. I'm still trying notes on simple synthesizer, though. Ah, can't talk. Communicator error. Synthesizer. 
Uh, well, that's great news to hear. Um, it's always nice to see someone who's getting into it. I think... Let me hide this. I'm going to show you one of the first song files I have. Unfortunately, I am a destructive artist, and when I don't like things, I delete them forever. So I don't have a lot of my original song files when I began messing around with this back in 2015. So let me see. Okay, uh, I don't have any old project files, but I can play you the song. And uh, you will be able to definitely hear the difference in uh, quality. Just to kind of give you an idea, everyone starts out not great in the beginning. But it's always fun to play around with. And it can, you know, it can become something more in the future. Okay, let me see here. I'm trying to find like one of the very first songs I did. Okay, yes, this is it. This is the first official song that I've ever made on FL Studio. I only have the MP3 file. The rest of it is destroyed. So it's only a minute and 30 seconds long. And you can hear the weeb in it. Like the weeb is strong with this one. Yeah, that was it. That was the very first song I'd ever made in FL Studio. And you you can hear the weeb in it. I'm not going to be ashamed of it. I was an impressionable weeb teenager. You know how it goes. Everyone does it once in their life. At least I feel like. They get their nerdy thing going. That's all they think about, even when they're making things. Uh, yes, so the uh, lovely space friend, Shell Gastropod, says it's very cool to hear the difference, like the instrument. Um, and that they do like anime music. Yes, I still like anime music. I'm much older in my journey here on Earth. And uh, still great, but that was not what I emulated. <laughs> it was just what I thought sounded cool. And it really was... I made three short albums, each had five songs in 2015, and they were purely about OCs that um, my space friends and I had come up with. So 
literally the name of this old five song album is Hime Neko. And it literally means cat princess. So yeah, the weeb was there. <laughs> um uh Shell says I do love OC content. Yes, OC content is great and grand. We appreciate it. All artists start there, I believe. Um so maybe someday in the future we'll have an old album listening party and go through just the absolute trove of nonsense that I have. Uh, I tried to remake one of the songs. So uh, one of the albums I created was called uh, Draquan Noir and literally just Black Dragon. It was about an OC character that was just um, a dragon shifter and a businessman by day. So I'll go ahead and I'll play the first version. The original song I used, the thing about FL Studio, it'll let you use all the instruments in it. But if you don't own anything, um, it'll not save those uh, patterns. So it'll let you completely use it and you can completely export everything as long as you're cool with not editing that song ever again later. <laughs> and that's what happened with a lot of these. I was using stuff I didn't own and that's the reason why I wound up just completely trashing the original files. And uh, I tried my best to recreate it by ear and then edit it to sound a little better. And this was even before I started my album work, so I think I've improved quite a bit again from the remake. And I do have the file for the remake. So let's play the original song first, and then we'll hop over to the remake file. Uh, this one was Cement Jungle. Okay, and that was that one. So let me go through and open up the remix file, the 2022 version of Cement Jungle. And then let me hop over so you guys can see it. Okay, and turn this on. 
Okay, so I found which instruments I was using. I do own the pack now. I did not own it at the time of the original song, but I own it now. So <laughs> there was no problem. Uh, let me get my channel rack. I don't know why that disappeared. Okay. So the thing about the original song, I didn't know what uh, risers were. I didn't know about sound envelopes. I didn't know about reverb. I didn't know about the patterning of a song, about the rhythm it's supposed to have. A uh, general rule of thumb, every eight bars, there's supposed to be a change somewhere, at least, uh, depending on the music you're making. But usually you want to keep it interesting and change it. Every eight bars have a different sound and um, a different kind of pattern to it to help keep it moving. I'm glad you're learning some things, uh, Sheld. So. Uh, this one, I came in 2022, prior to me working on the Sweet Home Aboon album. I found the piano sound I was using. I did not organize this at all very well, and you can see that. This was pre-organized me. <laughs> and... So everything's very gray. It's kind of hard to tell what things are. Some of these are still named pattern. Uh, but uh, we'll go ahead and press play and go through what it sounds like now. happened here. It's not playing properly and I can hear it. Let me... I'm going to go ahead and play the version I have on iTunes because I know that one's working. It seems like the tempo got messed up in FL Studios whatever because I made this in FL Studio 11. And I began my album work in FL Studio 20, and it definitely messed with something during the conversion. So we're going to go back in, play this again from the beginning. It's going to sound better, I promise. <laughs> and I'll follow it through like we did last time. I'll follow through like last time. I just got to change something really quick. And this song was even made before I knew about the uh, eight bar rule. So it still has some improvement to be made. Definitely in the beginning, I know I started it way too early. Um, I should have given it some breathing room before the piano started. Uh, so if I was going through again, I definitely would give it some, at least two seconds of space, because two seconds can go a long way in a song. Okay, let's get this on the mini. Let's get everything switched back over.
Okay. So that was that. Uh, Sheld had said that the part uh, where the lower sound uh, and the high-pitched melody together sounded cool. Uh, thank you. Uh, that is something that you should keep in mind when you begin making your own music. Have varying pitches of uh, notes and instruments because it helps add interest into the song. Uh, so this one was definitely better than the original. And I think this is the one I'm going to redo every year. So what time did I do this song? I probably did this song in July or June. Uh, just as something neat to do, to try and do. But now that I know what the instruments are, I can go back and remake this much easier and much better now with what I know. So I think I'm going to make this our, uh, our progress, or like our progress track. Something we can go back to every year and make a little better with everything we learn. Yes, uh, redoing to track what you learn. And luckily, I did save the original version of the song somewhat. I do destroy things I don't like, so there's probably a lot of songs just in a graveyard, a digital graveyard of sorts. So yeah, uh, you'll definitely improve with the more practice you do and the more things you look into. Uh, with the program I use, FL Studio, there are just so many free tutorials on YouTube that it made it easy to learn and to work with. So um, I was really lucky. The drawback is FL Studio is kind of expensive. Like really expensive. I got it for myself for Christmas whenever... I was, oh, what, 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 18, 19, probably 23 years into my Earth stay. Uh, Gaster's Bond said, glad to see good resources, at least. Yes. And luckily, in our day and age, with YouTube, and uh, being able to look up anything with the flick of a wrist. Um, it should be easy for you to find other people to help you with whatever you're working with. So I know Edison's a really popular one as well, and there's a lot for that online too. Uh, if you're just beginning and you've got some synthesizer equipment, there's plenty of YouTubers that can help you master that as well. Uh, you know, knowledge should be free. And I think being able to share knowledge with one another like that and help each other learn and grow is one of the greatest things about being on Earth. Okay, so let's see. Is there anything else you'd like to see? Um, I kind of went off on a tangent. A 40-minute tangent. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, but, yeah, if there's anything, uh, yes, okay, so Shell's gotta head out soon, too. I went over the time I was expecting, so we'll just wrap it up for today. So, uh, I just want to thank everyone who stopped by. I want to give a special thanks to our friend Shell Gastropod. Go check them out on Twitter at the same name and uh, follow them on YouTube as well. Um, Shell says, I have more questions, but I'll save them for another time. We'll look forward to it. We'll always be willing to answer people's questions. Uh, you just have to ask. Uh, so that's it for today, space friends. And until next time, have fun.